In lesson 16 I demonstrated how to add a line to the lines property of a memo. I also explained that you must use the add method of the lines property to add the string value. The add method is a predefined task that the Delphi creators built for the lines property. In other words, if he didn't exist, we would have to write our own code to add string lines to a memo. That code may be 5 or 10 lines of code. But because everything is already built into the add method, Delphi reduces our workload and saves us a lot of time. All you have to do is to understand how to use the predefined tasks in your code. We refer to the predefined tasks provided by Delphi as methods. For this explanation, I will use the add method again. But almost all methods apply these principles. When we use a method, we say that we are calling the components method. For example, if I add a line to the lines property of a memo, I'm calling the add method. Some methods require from us to provide input. The add method, for example, needs to know what must be added to the lines of the memo. We must therefore give something to the add method to enable it to add it to the lines property. If a method requires an input, you must put that input between two brackets after the method name. You must also know what type of input is required by the method that you are calling. The add method, for example, can only add the string value to the lines of the memo. You will therefore type a string between the two brackets. For example, you can type the words you added between the brackets. The phrase you added will then be added to the lines property. The string value that you type between the brackets when calling the add method can also be a string expression. For example, you can add a string value that concatenates more than one string into a main string. There on the screen I demonstrate how you can concatenate the value type into an edit to the words you added. And then I concatenate the words to the memo to that phrase. If the text in edit first name is my own name, then the string that I add will read you added Gerard to the memo. Notice that we do not use an assignment operator to do this. We only assign values to properties like the text property of an edit or the caption property of a label. But add is a method, not a property. We do not assign values to a method. We call a method and we pass the value that we want the add method to use. The value that we pass to the method is called an argument. So the add method requires from us to pass a string argument before it can execute its predefined code. The add method is just one of many pieces of predefined tasks provided by Delphi. Many of these predefined tasks or methods require an argument like the add method that requires a string value. A memo's lines are added by passing a string to the add method of the lines property as illustrated there on the screen. A rich edit also has a lines property. We also add a line to a rich edit by calling the add method of the lines property and by passing a string value. A list box has an items property. The items in the list box must also be added by calling the add method, and it also requires us to pass a string value to be added. Notice that all the properties that use the add method are plural. We can add more than one line to a memo and more than one item to a list box. The caption properties of labels, panels, and buttons are not collections, they only contain a singular value. The text property of an edit can also only contain a singular string value. We do not call an add method to pass string values to captions and text. We assign a string value to a caption or a text property by using an assignment operator. While some methods require an argument, we do get methods that can be called without an argument. The clear method is an example of that. To remove the lines from a memo, we call the clear method of the memo without passing an argument. This will clear or remove all the lines from the memo. You can do the same for a rich edit. To remove all the lines from a rich edit, you call the clear method without passing an argument. You can also remove all the items from a list box by calling the clear method. You also do not pass an argument to this clear method. The text in an edit can also be removed by calling the clear method of the edit. The clear method of an edit also doesn't require an argument. However, we do not use the clear method to remove captions. To remove a caption from a label, a panel or a button, you must assign an empty string to the caption property. An empty string is two single inverted commas, without any text enclosed. In other words, you type a single quotation mark and follow it up with another single quotation mark. 
no text or spaces between the single quotation marks. Another method that doesn't require input arguments is the show method. An existing component can be hidden on a form and will therefore not be seen by your users. At some point in time you may want to show the hidden component to your user. To achieve that you call the show method of the component. Here I demonstrate how you can call the show method of a label called LBL output. Notice that I'm not doing an assignment and I'm not passing an argument. The opposite of the show method is the hide method. To hide a component you simply call its hide method without an argument as illustrated on the screen. An edit has focus while we are typing text into it. If our cursor or insertion point moves to another edit, the focus will be shifted to that edit and if we click on a button or a bit button, the focus will be shifted to the button we click. To shift focus from one component to another, you click on that component or you can use the tab key on your keyboard. Sometimes it is necessary to write code to set the focus on a specific component. For example, when you click on a reset button, the focus will automatically be set to that reset button. After everything is reset on your form, you may want the focus to be removed from the reset button and rather set the focus on one of your edits so that your user doesn't have to manually set the focus by clicking on that edit. To set focus to a component in code, you call that component's set focus method. Here I illustrate how you can set the focus to an edit called edit first name. I call the edits set focus method without passing an argument. The methods that are illustrated here are just a few of many methods that exist for Delphi components. You may have noticed that their names are all verbs like add, clear and set focus. This also improves the readability of your code. A verb makes it sound like the instruction is performing a task. That is one of the reasons why Delphi is such an easy language to learn. Its instruction sounds like plain simple English. Ok, in the previous lesson we used the add method to add lines to the memo. Let's go back to the translation application that we worked on in the last few lessons. And let's call more methods. Here I have the application open in design time. We already coded the English of Afrikaans and display buttons. Let's first run the application to observe the current behavior of our components. Click the run button in the speed bar. Let's take a closer look at the first name edit. In the first name edit you can see a flashing vertical line. That is called an insertion point. If the insertion point flashes inside an edit, it indicates that that edit has the focus at the moment. If an edit has focus, it means that you can type text into the edit without clicking on that edit first. For example, I can immediately start to type my name into the edit. I do not have to manually set focus to the edit. After I type my name, the insertion point flashes behind the last character that I typed in. That indicates to me that the focus is still on the first name edit. To move the focus to the surname edit, I can click on the edit or I can press the tab key on my keyboard. Here I press the tab key and now the insertion point jumps to the surname edit. Let me just demonstrate how I can set the focus back to the first name edit. I simply click inside the first name edit and there you can see the insertion point flashes behind the name again. Click inside the surname edit again to move the focus back to the surname edit and type your surname. Click the Afrikaans button. The captions of the labels and the form change to Afrikaans and the Afrikaans button is disabled while the English button is enabled. Notice that the insertion point is not flashing inside the surname edit anymore. When you click a button, the focus shifts away from the component that had focus the last time. The focus is now supposed to be on the Afrikaans button because I clicked on it. But because the code for the Afrikaans button disables the button, it cannot keep the focus. A component that is disabled can never have focus. Click the English button. The captions are translated to English again and the English button is disabled while the Afrikaans button is enabled. Because the English button is the last component that was clicked, it is supposed to have focus. But because it disables itself, it can't have focus. Now, click on the display button. A line is added to the lines property of the memo. In the previous lesson, we called the add method of the lines property and we passed the string as an argument. Notice the dotted rectangle that displays inside the display button. That indicates to us that the focus is now on the display button. 
because the last component that was clicked is the display button. Click the reset bit button and observe how it gets focus. The dotted rectangle displays on the reset bit button now. Even though the reset bit button receives focus when we click on it, nothing else happened because we did not instruct the bit button to do something. We need to write code for the reset bit button to enable it to do something. Let's figure out what it must do. First we ask the question what must change? And the answer is the edits must change and the lines of the memo must change. Then we ask how must it change? The answer is the text must be removed from the edits and the lines must be removed from the memo and the first name edit must receive the focus. Finally we ask the question when must it change? And the answer is the changes must happen when the user clicks on BMB reset. Now we know what code we must write and that the code must execute when the reset bit button is clicked. Click the close button to go back to design time. While in design time double click the display button. Let's re-examine the add method that we called in the previous lesson. Here we called the add method of the lines property of the memo called MEM result. The add method requires a string argument. So we concatenated the words you added to the text property in the first name edit. Then we concatenated that with a space. Then we concatenated that with the text typed into the surname edit. And then we concatenated that with the phrase to the memo. This whole concatenated string is then passed to the add method as an argument. When the compiler reads this code, the add method will take your concatenated string value and it will go and do its own internal work to add the string to the lines property. You do not even have to know how it is done or what code the Delphi creators wrote to make this happen. The code is predefined or encapsulated in the add method. All you need to know is how to call the method and which type of arguments to pass to the method if any arguments are required. Let's switch back to the form. Click on the form's title bar to display it. Ok, now let's write code to call the methods to clear the edits and the memo when the user clicks on the reset button. Double click the reset button. Delphi creates a click event handler for BMB reset. Between the begin and the end statements, use indentation and type a comment. It must read clear the edits. On the next line, type edt first name followed by a dot. After the dot, type CLE. The word clear is highlighted in the pop up list. Press the enter key on your keyboard to select it. After the clear method, type a semicolon to enter instruction. On the next line, type an instruction to also clear the surname edit. The code must read edt surname dot clear, followed by a semicolon. Notice that I'm calling the clear methods without passing any arguments. The clear method doesn't require arguments. It will just go and perform its own internal task, which is to remove everything contained in the component that you want to clear. Let's test our code. Click on the run button in your speed bar or press the F9 key on your keyboard. The focus is immediately placed on the first name edit, so you can type your name without clicking inside the first name edit. Type your name into the first name edit and use the tab key to move the focus to the surname edit. Type your surname into the surname edit and click the display button. The add method is called and the line is added to the memo. Also notice that the display button has focus now. Click the reset button. The text is now removed from the first name and the surname edits. Also notice that the reset button has focus now. We must also remove the string that we added to the lines property of the memo when we click on the reset button. Close the form to go back to your code. After the last line, make a blank line and on the following line type a comment. It must read clear the memo. On the next line type memresult.clear followed by a semicolon. Just like with the two edits we call the clear method of the memo. We do not pass any arguments, we just call the method to go and execute its own internal code. This method will then go and do its job, which is to remove anything contained in the memo. Let's test it. Run your application. Type your name and surname into the edits. Click the display button. 
the string is added to the memo again. Click the reset button. The two edits are cleared and the string value that displayed in the memo is now also gone. If your user wants to add another line to the memo now, he first must shift the focus back to the first name edit by clicking on it. That is because the reset bit button has the focus at the moment. However, we want to provide a smooth user experience to our users. When our users click on the reset button, the edit and the memo must be cleared. But we also want to set the focus back to the first name edit, so that our user can start typing in the next name without shifting the focus to the edit manually. Close the form to go back to your code. After the last line of code that you typed, press enter to make a blank line. On the following line type a comment, it must read. Shift the focus to the first name edit. On the next line type edt first name followed by a dot. After the dot type setf. The word set focus is highlighted in the pop-up list. Press the enter key to select it and type a semicolon to end your instruction. This instruction calls the setFocus method of the edit named edtFirstName. The setFocus method doesn't require an argument. When you call this method, you tell it to go and perform its own internal code, and it will go and do its job, which is to set the focus to the edit. Run the application again. Type your name and surname into the edits. Click the display button, the line is added to the memo, click the reset bit button, the memo and the edits are cleared and the dotted rectangle is not on the reset bit button anymore. The insertion point flashes inside the first name edit, which means that the focus shifted immediately from the bit button to the edit when we clicked on reset. This allows the user now to immediately type a new name into the first name edit, without first clicking inside the edit. This concludes the code for our translation program. We do not have to write code for the close button because it already has its own built-in code. You have now created your first fully functional program in Delphi. It doesn't do much, but it is simple and it works. You learned a few new concepts with this application, like working with string and boolean values. In the next lesson, I will teach you how to work with numbers or integers. I will use one of the other projects that we created in Lesson 13 to demonstrate this. If you haven't done the exercises in Lesson 13, please take a moment and revisit Lesson 13. Go and do the exercises before you move on to the next video. I'll talk to you again in Lesson 19.